in today's show. No, Chauncey Billups is not going to get hired by the Phoenix Suns. Plus, everything you need to know about the NBA Draft Lottery heading into a major weekend for the Trail Blazers. Welcome to Locked on Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Trail Blazers, your daily Portland Trail Blazers podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, world? It's your past first point guard and Trail Blazers reporter, Mike Richmond. You are listening to another episode of Locked on Blazers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, available wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Thanks for making this show your first listen. Coming out to each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. So make it a part of your daily routine. Make your first listen. Tell your friends to do the same. It's Locked on Blazers, your team every day. In today's show, Got a little little non-news news update to start the show. No, Chauncey Billups is not going to get hired by the Suns, but there's more to it than that. And then, as promised, we'll talk all things NBA Draft Lottery, a huge weekend ahead for the Blazers. Uh, the biggest weekend of their offseason thus far and kind of jumping into what is next for them as Sunday will determine the NBA Draft Lottery. We'll talk history of the Blazers in the Draft Lottery. We'll have some positive manifestations and talk about what's at stake this weekend heading into a Sunday Draft Lottery. Let's start with the non-news. This is basically news that that like the the too long didn't read version of this is that Chauncey Billups is the Blazers head coach still. He was the Blazers head coach yesterday. He's going to be, going to be the Blazers head coach tomorrow. But um, in yesterday's show, we talked about how there was some reporting from Chris Mannix of Sports Illustrated that um, teams were monitoring the Chauncey Billups situation, and if he were to split from the Blazers, he would have interest from other teams. Other teams would have would have interest in him. And I mentioned on the show that I could easily see Chauncey Billups getting another head coach or assistant coaching job like immediately because he's Chauncey freaking Billups. But um I would be I was I would be a little bit surprised if he got a head coaching job. And then the reporting came out today that the Phoenix Suns finally, finally, finally fired Frank Vogel after um, waiting several weeks since their, or a week or so since their season ended. They made the decision to fire Frank Vogel, and it seems like it's because they already had a choice to be lined up in Mike Budenholzer. But before we get to them pr- pretty clearly hiring Mike Budenholzer, there was a brief window, maybe about 30 minutes this afternoon, when there was there was reporting from a couple different places, uh, including Jake Fisher of um, of Yahoo Sports and uh, Gerald Borgett at uh, PHNX that the that the Suns players uh, and I would say to, that my read on that means Kevin Durant and and Devin Booker but the Suns players were specifically interested in being coached by Chauncey Billups and if they had had say they would have been pushed they would have and had probably internally pushed heavily for the Suns to make a run at hiring Chauncey Billups and I think that's unpacking the stuff from Mannix right is that. Um, is that when he says like there would be interest in Chauncey Billups, there was, and and quite frankly, I think myself, I said I would be surprised if Chauncey Billups got another head coaching gig, and it doesn't sound like he's going to, right? They're going to hire Mike Budenholzer more on that in a moment, but like I think I underestimated what we generally know about Chauncey Billups. He's well liked by players. He is still, if nothing else, Chauncey freaking Billups. He's a Hall of Fame point guard, the 2004 Finals MVP. For older players in the league like Kevin Durant, like he was in the league and played, you know, he played, I think, five seasons, six seasons after Kevin Durant was drafted. Actually, I think Chauncey Billups retired in 2013, so six full seasons with Kevin Durant in the league. Um, for guys who are a little bit younger, he was, you know, the best player on a finals team when they were in high school or whatever it was, or or, or even a little bit younger. Um, but, like, he's an NBA legend, a modern 21st century NBA legend for these guys. And, moreover, when you talk to the Blazers players, what do they say about Chauncey Billups? They value his input. They have a great deal of respect for him. No one had, People just don't badmouth him. Players like him. If, the, is, if there is a positive thing you can say about Chauncey Billups' coaching staff, unequivocally positive, the players like him. Damon Lord, in his two seasons with Chauncey Billups, had, had positive things to say when he left, right? Like... The, we don't. We haven't heard from someone who's you know, and, and I guess this stuff doesn't come out that common. But like someone who left um, and said like, I I hate this dude. I don't think he got along very well with Robert Covington or whatever. But like, um, you know, for the most part, you hear good th- players like Chauncey Billups, and I think this is this is sort of maybe something that I was in, in general underestimating. Then again, 
the Suns waited to fire Frank Vogel, probably very specifically so they could hire Mike Budenholzer. There was like a 40 minute period when the Suns officially announced it. The newsbreakers all had it. Um, uh, and, and the Suns made it official shortly thereafter. Hey, Frank Vogel, one year after signing a five-year contract, is out after one season in Phoenix, and they, and, and now they're going to look for for um, a new coach. And even when, hey, they're going to look for a new coach, Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN said, Mike Budenholzer is, is expected to be like featured heavily in the coaching search. And uh, the local reporting in Phoenix was like, this is going to be quick, and Mike Budenholzer is the expected um the expected top choice. And then within about an hour, Woj had it like, yeah, they're finalizing a deal to make, you know, they're progressing towards a deal to make Mike Budenholzer the coach. And he is, has been building a staff in order to do so, which makes me think they waited to fire Frank Vogel so they could get a, the go ahead from Budenholzer. Yeah, I got my staff in order. Yeah, I'm ready to go. We can make this happen. Right. But there was some there was some interest in Chauncey from from you know players players across the league and I think that's telling. The Suns are are talented. They're, the roster's flawed and it's a mess, and they probably just like cashed in too many of their assets to ever get like really good. But when you have Kevin Durant, who was excellent this season, you have Devin Booker, you're gonna be competitive. Maybe not like championship level good, and maybe they, I don't know that they have a path to like easily building a championship level team, but uh, certainly not easily. But um, they're gonna be good. They're a competitive team that has championship aspirations, even if I don't think they have championship realities. That's the kind of job you would hire Chauncey Billups for. Quite frankly, that was sort of the job he got hired for in Portland, right? The Blazers weren't that good. They were a playoff team with aspirations to be better than that, right? They'd won, I think, 42 games the prior season, and they were... They were clearly flawed, but they were like a playoff caliber team in a good Western conference looking to take the next step from like good playoff team to like team that can win a playoff series and be a threat beyond that. And Chauncey Billups was hired not to be this like amazing tactician, but he was hired to be the voice in the room that could get the most by being well liked and respected out of a veteran talented club, which is exactly kind of the job in Phoenix, right? The the job that, that Chauncey Billups currently has coaching a very young team that needs to learn he wouldn't have applied for that job and the Blazers would have never hired him for that job. But the job in Phoenix is more akin to probably what he was sort of hired to do here in Portland, right? It's, it's, it's more in line with like the job description that he was that he was chosen uh, chosen for or, or earmarked for and then eventually hired um, after a coaching search. Uh, but like it, it was... Um, I think, you know, the, the news here is that Chauncey Billups isn't going anywhere. He's not going to get hired by the Suns because uh, Adrian Wojnarowski has it pretty firmly that they're hiring uh, Budenholzer. They haven't made it official, but Woj has done the things that he does when he has something that is a stone-cold lock, which he has tweeted about it a couple times, gone on TV to talk about it, and written a story on ESPN. So I think that one is is done, even though it's not official-official. It's like Woj, it's heavily Woj reported and nobody has it any other way. But, um, you know, so this is non-news, but this like we follow the breadcrumbs on the show <laughs> this is a bre- this is a breadcrumb this is a breadcrumb based show so we have to f- we're going to follow the breadcrumbs here that's that, that's what we do um Thomas Billups still the Blazers head coach not going anywhere but i, I think it's worth kind of parsing out you know um, the breadcrumbs un- untangling the spider webs whatever whatever you want to um Whatever metaphor you want to use there on 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 sort of the coaching search and the Blazers' future with with Chauncey Billups and all of those things, the truth is ain't nothing changed, <laughs> ain't nothing changed. But we have a little a little more details and a little more color about how things have not changed. Okay, in the second segment, let's talk dr- Blazers draft lottery history as we shift to all things draft lottery this Sunday. Noon Pacific time on ABC. You're going to be able to watch the draft lottery. A major, major moment. The first really, truly big moment of the Blazers offseason happens this weekend. So let's get you let's get you all the info you need ahead of Sunday's big event. Join me in that second segment, won't you? First, I want to tell you that today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy made easy easy and right now we got the nhl playoffs and the nba playoffs rolling along and so you can join in on america's number one fantasy sports app with over three million members it's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you're watching your favorite playoff moments with your favorite teams and your favorite players you just pick more or less on a two or more player stat stat ballot 
and watch your winnings roll in. And right now, you can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 when you're watching the NHL or NBA playoffs. Check out the entries on prize picks today. It's America's number one f- fantasy sports app. You can make your entries quickly and you can get your money quickly when you win. Uh, I play the NBA, but maybe I'll venture out and get into the NFL a little bit too. Whatever it is, go have a little bit of fun. Download the app today and use the code Locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. To match you dollar for dollar on your first deposit up to 100 bucks when you use the promo code locked on MBA once you download the app. It's prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Today's show is also brought to you by eBay Motors. I want to tell you three words, three words you need to know passion, drive, and patience. It's the formula for winning championship championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Whether you need a supercharger, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your parts guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, baby not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right. Let's talk draft lottery. Let's talk draft lottery. Enough, enough non-news news. Uh, let's let's talk draft lottery. This weekend's huge for the Blazers. Um, this is a this is the most pivotal summer that they've had since last summer when they had to freaking trade Damian Lillard. I don't want to oversell this summer like it's like, hey, yeah, blah, 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 blah. It's like last year they traded a franchise icon, right? This isn't as big a summer as that. And and last year they tried to thread the needle or they didn't try to thread the needle. They just tried to tear it down and they successfully did so, right? This summer they're building back up, but they have so many things they need to get right. They have so many things they need to get right because they're really far away from what they need to be. Um they're just they're just they're light on talent as is and that's just that's the truth of it right is that they're just they're just a light on talent so part of building up from being light on talent and Joe Cronin says uh, said as much at his end of, end of season press conference he knows the deal is that you got to get the draft right um, whether they make one selection whether they make four selections they have a, a two likely lottery picks and two second rounders 34 and 40 in this draft no matter how many picks you make and, and or tra- and trades you make around it they got to get this they got to get the draft right they got to get it right. They they need to pick an impact player, whether that is impact long term role player or they find the diamond in the rough, the star in the twenty twenty four draft. They need someone who can contribute, probably pretty like within pretty quickly and be a positive player going like someone who is part of the core going forward or m- preferably m- probably multiple someone's. I don't think they can take four rookies, but but one or two that that hit and and you get it right. It's ideal every. You know, there's a, like there's a lot of people's like tanking doesn't work, and, and it's hard, right? Like plenty of teams stay bad forever, but um, the commonality between teams that get out of the rut is they nail draft picks. That, that's the trick. You nail draft picks, but f- before you nail draft picks, you got to find out where you're picking. And this Sunday, the the draft lottery will determine where the Blazers are. They have uh, the the fourth best odds, and they also have it. They are owed a pick by the Golden State Warriors, who are the back of the lottery, 14th best odds. Uh, Golden State has can only jump up into the top four. So when they do the draft lottery and they announce and they flip over Golden State cards first at 14, that means the Blazers get that pick right there at 14. If they don't, they show any other team when they flip it over, that means that Golden State's in the top four and the Blazers are going to get a future pick. Um, so right away, there's a little bit of excitement for you. But before we get into deeper into what's at stake and all the odds you need to know, let's talk draft history. Let's get let's get a little bit in the way back machine uh, and talk where the Blazers have been in the draft lottery because traditionally they've been pretty good. Um, you know, by virtue of making the playoffs for two consecutive decades for 21 consecutive seasons, um, like they. They haven't been in the lottery that much. The lottery, lottery didn't come into existence until 1985, but the Blazers spent almost 20 years avoiding the lottery. Uh, they didn't make the, they weren't in the lottery until 2004 when things got a little bit dark. And even that year, they were 13th. They were the back half of the lottery. 
And so they've been in now 10 times. And if you're watching on YouTube, I've got a little draft history lottery graphic that I crafted up for you. Um, if you're listening to the audio feed, I'll walk you through it in any case. Um, but th- this will be the 10th time the Blazers find themselves in the lottery. Uh, and, and they have moved up. Uh, they moved up um, in in 2007, famously from seventh from seventh to first, and and ended up picking Greg Oden. There was no one else available in that draft. Don't look back. Um, but in 2005, they also moved up. Uh, they they moved up in 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 2022, or excuse me, they moved up in 2023 last year. Like they they've had they've had a, they've had those moments of success. But the big one was in 2007. Um, in, in 2004, the first year they won the lottery didn't go anywhere. 05, they, they had the fourth best odds and slipped and, and moved up to, to third. In 2006, the, fir- the best odds, the best odds, the worst record in the NBA, and they fell back. But in that draft, they ended up coming away with uh, Brandon Roy and LaMarcus Aldridge. So it's not all bad, even if you lose the, the lottery. You can still make moves. Um, then the following year, Brandon Roy wins Rookie of the Year. They send him to, uh, shout out to Andre Bargnani for getting that one vote. So Brandon Roy didn't get uh, Uranus Rookie of the Year. In 2007, Brandon Roy goes to the lottery, sits up there at the lectern, and wins the whole dang thing. And the Blazers drafted um, what I assume is a multi-time All-Star who. <laughs> Is now currently playing on a, on uh, on a new team in the desert. Uh, actually, it was Greg Oden, and he I think he turned out fine. I'm not going to look it up. Uh, the following year, they didn't make the playoffs again, but they were back to 13th, and they didn't go anywhere. Then they made the playoffs for a handful of seasons, and then dropped back in when that when that you know Brand Roy's hurt, Greg Oden's hurt, and uh, and the team mutinies on on uh, on Nate McMillan. They end up back in the lottery, and they actually ended up with two lottery picks because they made a trade sending Gerald Wallace to the Brooklyn Nets in exchange for a lottery pick. And the Nets had the sixth best sixth best best odds, excuse me, and they didn't go anywhere. And the Blazers with their own pick was eleventh, and they didn't go anywhere. The Blazers stood pat at two spots, eleven and six. They drafted freaking Damian Lord and also Myers Leonard with their own pick. But but a major, a major boon in 2012. Uh, after Dame's rookie year, they were back in the lottery with the 10th best odds. They didn't go anywhere. Then they made the playoffs for a decade. <laughs> and they didn't fall back in it till 2022 uh, when they f- finished with the 6th best, o- best odds and then dropped to 6th. Then last season, the 5th best odds going into the lottery and ended up in 3rd. And then this year, where will they land? Um, obviously in 2022, 6-7, to seven, they draft Shaden Sharp in 2023. 5-3, to three, they draft Scoot Henderson. And now they find themselves here with the 4th best odds. Where will they end up? Well, we don't know, but what we do know is the math, baby. We do know the math. Um, the Blazers have a 13.2% chance of getting the number one overall pick. They have a 50% chance of landing in the top four. That's just, you know, 12.8 at two, 12.3 at four, 11.7, or 12.2 at two, 12.3 at three, 11.7 at four. But, but moreover, 13.2 at one, 50% chance of landing in the top four. But it's not their most likely spot. The most likely spot, just the way the math works, is that the Blazers could will be in sixth. And there is a 24.6% chance that the Blazers get these 6%, basically a quarter of their combos, a quarter of all the combos that are going to be that are going to be pulled that get pulled would land the Blazers in sixth. That that would mean that two teams currently outside of the top four jump up in there. So if if teams behind the Blazers, San Antonio, Toronto, Memphis, Utah, were were, were to jump up in there or any of the others, um, the Blazers would fall back because the way the lottery works is only for the top four teams. And then everything else behind that is based on order of where you finish. So that by virtue of losing the tiebreaker to Charlotte, um, if the Blazers don't move up in the lottery, they're going to be their position is fixed behind Charlotte and ahead of San Antonio, just all the way down the board. So whoever jumps up, the Blazers are, will always stay in that order. The furthest the Blazers could fall back if things really go haywire is all the way to eighth. They only have a 2.2 percent chance of falling to eighth, but the most likely spots, just how the math works, is sixth or seven. A 24.6 percent chance of landing in sixth, and a 16.4 percent chance of landing in seventh. They also have that warrior. Pick the Warriors pick is pretty likely to be 14th, 96.6% chance that it's 14th. 96.6% chance that it's 14th. 0.7% chance that it's that's the top pick overall, um, and a 3.4% chance just in general that the Blazers the, the Blazers do not get the pick. 
from the Warriors. If they don't get the pick from the Warriors, it jumps to 2025 and it's only top one protected. I think that's better. Um, you know, there's no guarantee that the Warriors are aging and they're old and they're in, 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 entering a very interesting summer where Clay Thompson has free agency and they want to bring him back, but he's going to test the market. And even if they do bring him back, he's he's older. Seth Curry's older. Draymond Green's older and hard to hard to count on. And, and the younger players on their team haven't really taken that big step forward. But they certainly could be better next season. Like I don't, I don't think it's out of the question that they could improve. Um, I, I think the in general, the gamble that I think is better is for the Warriors to jump up into the top four, the Blazers to end up with the fifth pick or whatever it is. Um, I guess the Blazers could end up like the Blazers win the lottery, uh, the Warriors end up fourth, and then the Blazers get a future pick. Like I think, I think that's maybe the best case scenario for the Blazers this year, um, and. If they do that, I, I just think you'd rather roll the dice on 2025. It's considered a stronger draft, and considering the Blazers have two high seconds, 34 and 40, like, you know, they, they could end up with two rookies, and at 34 is a, 34 is a high enough pick. Like, that's right. That's right at the top of the second round where, where NBA players often land. That is not an uncommon spot. So early second round picks that, that pop and in, 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 end up being NBA players. I don't think it's the worst thing if the Blazers end up with three picks in this draft and an extra pick in 2025. I think that's better for them. Choose your own adventure. I think you're you are you are gambling on the Warriors being a, on a lottery team again, or like if they're not, you end up with the 18th pick in the 2025 draft. Um, I don't know enough about the prospects in either of these drafts to tell you definitively that 14 in 2024 is way worse than 18 in 2025. I don't think anyone really knows that. I'm sure you could assume, like, if, if people say the 2025 is better, but I think it means that it's better at the top. Like, there's more surefire stars, like with with Cooper Flag and Ace Bailey, or people who think like franchise changers, right? As opposed to like really deep and role player. And if you're in the teens, you're really deep and role player in terms of in terms of getting it right. But I think I think what you want to see, I think what you want to see when 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 Mark Mark Tatum is flipping things over on Sunday afternoon, is that you want to see someone else's name come up first because you want the Warriors to jump into the top four. I think I might be wrong, but I think that's I think that's what you're rooting for. That's that's what's at stake. Let's talk a little bit more about the Blazers uh, Blazers pick and what's at stake for them in uh, the third segment. And also let's um pan- let's manifest some positive vibes because uh, I don't believe in jinxes. I believe in positivity. Uh, join me in that third segment, won't ya? First, though, I want to tell you that today's show was brought to you by none other than Monopoly Go. It's the twist on traditional Monopoly that you're going to love. Look, Listen, if you're a Monopoly player, you know that game is competitive. That's a cutthroat board game. But Monopoly Go is a twist on a classic. And so you could get into some co-op modes where you can team up with friends uh, for tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much more to get. Get unique stickers that you can trade with your friends to complete albums and get big prizes when those albums are complete there's cool new playing pieces to travel bo- the boards with and hilarious emojis for taunting your friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults go win those hilarious emojis so you can taunt at a high level plus monopoly go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges a kind of a ton of those tournaments and challenges include their own unique mini games like digging for treasure or a robot pachinko machine and this this it's there's tons of timed events that will help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench, go download it now for free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. Still a pass first point guard. I'm still Mike Richmond, and you are still listening to Locked on Blazers. So we talked about what's at stake with the Warriors pick. What's at stake with the Blazers pick? I want to touch on this briefly here. I think, and this isn't, this isn't like, a, this isn't a bold thing to say. This is, I'm not being real. Um, I consider myself smart. I think I'm a smart person in, in general, but this isn't like a real big brain thing. I think it's better to win. <laughs> I think you want the number one pick. Um, you know, there is... There's a lot of kind of game theory around a draft that is considered weak. And I I think there is like this, 
I, I, a bad draft, and talking to, to people who do this professionally, a bad draft just means that there, are, there aren't franchise changers. That doesn't mean there aren't good players in this draft. And, and if you look at the history of drafts, even bad drafts have good players in them. Like even the awful ones. 2013 is the one that really comes to mind. Giannis Antetokounmpo is in that draft, right? Like even, even, even the awful ones. It's like, I know Anthony Bennett went first, right? I know there's a whole mess up top. Um, you could even argue like the 2006 draft was kind of a mess, except for the Blazers like really got it right. Other than the, than the rest of the teams that really were really were pretty deep, pretty messy along the way. But like even bad, even bad drafts, you there are stars in them. It can be harder to find stars in these drafts, right? Because there's it's it's maybe they typically don't go one and they go deeper because of because of there's lack of consensus and there's just and 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 it's hard to the drafting's hard like the teams get it wrong but i think in general and this is like the big brain thing i'm saying it's like i think in general you just want the top pick because i think what you want is to be able to make the you want to have the widest possible like decision tree right you want to be able to say let make every no one makes any decisions for you i think you want to win the lottery so you make all the decisions if they win the lottery, the obvious pick is Alex Saar. There is, um, for the most part, the strongest consensus name you see at the top is is Alexander Saar. I will say ESPN has um, has Zachary Risache at the top. Um, I don't really see it with him. Obviously, his skill set fits. Like I don't see it with him as the number one overall pick. I think he might be like a totally legit NBA player for a long time. He can shoot and defend, and he's big. Those are skills that travel in the league. Sar seems to be someone. Alexander Sar is playing professionally in Australia right now. Seems to be someone who um, has the defensive tools to be a have a relatively high floor and maybe some upside if he continues to grow on offense of being a really good player. The the name that I have jokingly con- compared him to is like. So you're telling me you're going to draft Sergi Baca number one overall, like a uh, a uh, really good defensive player with some shooting ability, but like maybe not a lot of other individual offense. He's probably better than Sergi Baca as that sort of joke, right? Like he probably his ceiling is certainly higher than that. But Ibaka's pretty good. <laughs> He's a pretty good player in good teams. Um, so I think you want one. And I think that's uncontroversial. And I, I think it would be SAR. I think that's what's at stake, right? Is that you're getting to, you're able to draft someone who can, at least in early in his career, maybe play a little bit of power forward and that you're hoping grows into being this like, uh, you know, multi uh, defensively versatile center who can shoot a little bit and can, um, you know, it can stretch the floor, can block shots, can guard, can guard in space, like is a really versatile, impactful defender and grows into being, um, you know, a rim running pick and roll and also pick and pop type of big and that and that becomes an anchor with the defense and with a little bit of offense sprinkled in. Right. I think that's the hope. And I think that would be the obvious pick of the Blazers were at one. That's what's at stake at one. Is I, I think you're rooting for that. If it falls below one, you really like if the Blazers are two, two through six. I think you really consider what other teams want and then it allows you to maybe trade and move around, right? Um, I think we'll talk about that a bunch over the next month is like once we see where everybody lands and kind of talk about team needs and all that stuff and hopefully bring a bunch of the other locked on hosts on the show and we can talk, we can discuss those things. Like, I think that's a big part of this is like where where other teams land. The Blazers have two picks, right? They're able they're, they're a team that can maneuver if they want. And depending on where they land, they may be able to move up. They may be able to move down um, that they, they'll have some they'll have some optionality, most likely. OK, that's what's at stake for the Blazers pick. I said I don't believe in jinxes and I don't I don't not for this. I don't. What I believe is in positive manifestations. Um I'm I'm a little superstitious. There's some things I do that I won't do when I um I'm watching my beloved Tar Heels, hence the Tar Heel hat for this one. Um is um there's things I won't do and won't say out loud because I don't want to jinx my team. But in this case, we're just counting on ping pong balls. This isn't sending vibes to to uh real humans taking jump shots in the ACC tournament. This is ping pong balls. This is a this is a little machine. It's the magic. That's what I'm rooting for. The magic of of good of good ping pong ball combinations. So I don't believe in jinxes here. I don't believe in it. I believe in positive manifestations. So if you're listening to this in your car, um, maybe pull over and chill for a second. If you're listening to this while you're walking your dog in the morning, or if you're sitting down somewhere at your desk or wherever wherever it is you might be listening to it, give yourself a moment here. We're going to do this in about 40 seconds. Pause for a moment. Take 40 seconds out of your day. 
with the first pick in the 2024 NBA Draft, the Portland Trailblazers select. One more time for you. This is positive manifestation. Let's do it one more time. With the first pick in the 2024 NBA Draft, the Portland Trailblazers select. Envision it, believe it, see it. They're going to win the lottery. That's a little positivity for you on a Friday. I need some of your help, some of yours help. Um, I want to do a project this summer. This is not going to be something that comes out super soon, but I want I, I need some of yours help on, on a project I want to work on this summer. Um, if you are someone who goes to Blazer games, whether you're a season ticket holder or someone who goes, I, like I would like um, to hear from mostly people who go to like in, in the four plus games a year range. If you've been to one game over the last decade, I'm happy for you. You can send me an email, but that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is people who regularly go to Blazer games, whether you live in Portland or whether you live outside of the city and you, and you, you come in for games. I would love to hear from you for a project I'm working on. Email me locked on blazers pod at gmail.com that's locked on blazers pod at gmail.com send me an email um and i will tell you what i'm working on if you are interested in being involved um it wouldn't necessarily be like being on the show but there will be opportunities to be on the show if you were to if you were to uh be interested in it um Hit me up, lockedonblazerspod at gmail.com. That's that's what I'm looking for. Um, if you're like, particularly, I'm looking for season ticket holders and I'm looking for people who regularly attend games. One more time, the email address is lockedonblazerspod at gmail.com. I'll probably put out another call for this next week, um, but I have faith that many of you will respond. And if you're listening to this and you know people who fit that description, tell them to email me because um, I would love to I'd love to chat for a little project I'm trying to put together. Um, that reminds me, next week we're going to do some mail bag stuff but it's gonna be draft related uh because we're, we're kind of shifting we're not gonna do all draft all the time but we're shifting heavily into draft mode over the next month um because that's what time of it is after after the, the lottery so if you have a dr- if you have draft related questions or the f- fun draft related thoughts that you want to share with me the email address locks on blazers at gmail.com let me know that it's uh, a mailbag question for the show and um finally Next time you hear my voice, the Blazers will have won the lottery and they'll have the number one overall pick. And the Warriors will have jumped up to four and they'll totally blow the pick. They'll stink next season. The Blazers will end up with one and two in the following draft. And they're going to save the freaking franchise. That's how it's going to work. Positive manifestations. Uh, So next time you hear my voice, next show, Monday show, we will talk draft lottery and what's next for the Blazers and all of the things that happen now that we know the order of of the whole dang draft. It's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Now we'll have a little clarity on what's next for the Blazers or at least what's ahead for the Blazers. Uh, that will be Monday's show. Uh, typically Sunday shows come out early. It's, it's Mother's Day. Don't look for it early. It's going to be out late Sunday night. Look for it late Sunday night. Um, I appreciate you listening. Tell your friends about the podcast. Tell them about the uh, season ticket holder thing and regular Blazers games attendees thing. That's what I'm looking for some help. Uh, And then come back next week for five more shows. I appreciate you listening. I will talk to you soon.